Good evening, G1s. I am Master Wayne with another G1 interview, and joining me this evening is a god among men, Mr. Johnny Crimson 2000. How are you doing this evening, dude? Hey, guys. I'm doing good. Brilliant. Right, we're going to start off with some screw attack questions, as we normally do, and then go on to your personal works, videos, blogs, and then we're going to uh, go on with the gaming confessionals for this interview, and then we're going to go swiftly on to the random gaming questions and then finish off with a new section the G1 question so Johnny how did you discover yeah. ScrewAttack.com um, I discovered ScrewAttack a long time ago what initially got me interested was the, the top 10 um, I found some of them on, on YouTube that was like my first experience watching them but it was back when it was still uh, Stuttering Craig and Handsome Tom. And just from that, at first I thought, I honestly thought it was just those two doing like random videos. Like they, they were just two two buddies just hanging out together. And it wasn't until a little later that I discovered like, hold up, there's like an entire website, you know, behind them. And I think that's when I kind of just discovered um, ScrewTech.com as a whole. Yeah, that's how I found it. I've watched a yeah. lot of their top tens and their video game vaults while I was drunk. <laughs> and then uh, I stumbled on their site and signed up straight away. Okay, what is your favorite Screw Attack original show? Um, that one's kind of hard. Like, I love so many of them because there's so many shows that I wish I would have come up with. Like, it seems kind of like obvious that you would come up with that but it, it's so great like I mean I, I could say top tens because there, there's a, honestly my favorite top tens like better than like GT I like GT countdowns too but yeah. they don't have the same quirkiness they don't have the same fun that Screw Attacks does but I also like the video game vaults because you know they cover games that other websites don't cover um I love Mario Party After Dark <laughs> um that one's insane so, I, I don't know, I, I, I guess, overall, I'm, I'm going to have to say Mario Party After Dark, just because of how random it is, and how crazy all of it is. Just, overall, I think I've laughed more during Mario Party After Dark than any other show that they have so far. So I'll, I'll go with Mario Party After Dark. Excellent. And who is your favorite Screw Attack member of staff? You know, I'm going to have to go with, I'm going to have to go with, with Stutter and Craig. Um, it's a toss-up between him and and um, Chad, but I think me and Craig share some of the same kind of taste for games, like old school games. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with him, and I love his sense of humor. Chad obviously always brings a lot of energy to you know whatever kind of thing he does, but overall I think I'm I'm closer to to, to Craig as far as our taste some of our favorite games so I'm, I'm gonna have to go ahead yeah especially um my favorite of late has to be evil craig yeah <laughs> i i watched Guy's the one insane. Uh, the, the the royal rumble that they did the wrestling the yeah. virtual wrestling league and then uh evil craig came out and he was naked <laughs> <laughs> so what? yeah it was a good one this year yeah, yeah, like, I, uh, it's such a shame. I can't find the, the, the ones from the years before on, on ScrewTech. I don't know why. Hmm, might be on YouTube somewhere. Yeah. Okay, what was the last thing on the site that made you laugh? Um, made me laugh. It's kind of hard. Like, I, I go on these, like, ScrewTech binges where I just go and watch chunks of like screw attack episodes of whatever so it could be where you know maybe one week I'll be really into screwing around so I'll just go and find all the episodes of screwing around and then it's like you know the Mario Party After Dark or then it's you know, you know kind of the top 10 so it's kind of hard I, can't, I actually can't remember like I've been watching a lot of screw attack lately but I can't pinpoint just one time specifically where I've laughed um, besides that one time where I watched Evil Craig coming out of nowhere just butt naked. <laughs> I don't know. 
Yeah, that's a good one. I'm, I'm gonna have to go with that one because that's the only that's the one that sticks out of my mind. But I'm pretty sure I laughed at more than just that. A couple of things that spring to my mind is when they did the video game vault for Mr. Nuts, yeah. and they had a <laughs> uh, a sexual content counter on the on the bottom of the yeah. screen. <laughs> and what um, one of the clip of the weeks? Uh, what was it called? Chat has another. Uh, Chat has a a better idea about the slap. The slap energy drink. I think I might have watched that one. I, was, I can't remember. Yeah, it was Nick dressed up as the slap man. And he'd just creep up on oh, yeah, different yeah, yeah, members yeah, yeah. of staff and I just slap them. Yeah. That's my favourite. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. what does being a G1 mean to you? Wow, curveball. Uh, the, the more time I spent on, on ScrewTech.com and got to know other G1s, you know, like yourselves and, 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 and other ones that I chatted with, like in the forums and stuff like that. Um, and even on Twitter, because they're they're kind of everywhere. They 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 do a good job at kind of letting themselves know that, or letting others know that they're G ones. Yeah. Um, either in the description of Twitter, you know, like, crowd G one, screwtech.com. Um, I just love the community in general. You know, like it seems like a very nice, like close knit group. Where, you know, I I mean I I go to other websites every now and then, like other gaming related websites, but it just doesn't have the same kind of like homey. Yeah. You know, like, you know, when you when you're with G ones or you're talking to G ones, they're very cool about everything. You know, and that's on you know that that's been said a lot of times on the like, content that ScrewTech.com has made. But it really is, you know, the more the more I hang out you know, on ScrewTech.com, the more it seems that they're telling the truth. It's not just some kind of marketing ploy. Like, hey, be friends. You know, it, it really is like a, like almost like a family. So I I really like that. Brilliant. Not just a bunch of trolls. <laughs> no, we're not known for trolling. Okay, and that finishes the uh, the screw tech questions part of the interview, and we're going to move swiftly on to your personal works, videos, and blogs. You've done a lot. <laughs> that's, uh... Nope, that's not good. Okay, here we go. Okay, your latest blogs or videos. Um, your Legend of Zelda artwork. What was the inspiration for that? Um, well, in the real world, um, I am, like outside the internet, um, I am a graphic designer. That's what I went to school with. That's what I do as a profession, I guess. Cool. So, I've been trying to kind of my main thing is like I like to do work that I would want to buy, uh, or like t-shirt designs, poster designs that I wouldn't mind having on the wall or wear myself. So a lot of a lot of that stuff deals with kind of like uh, I guess nerdy culture. If you want to call it that? Video games, you know, things like Star Wars, you know, superhero stuff. So I do a lot of that stuff. And uh, in my near my house, there is a like an old retro uh, video game store really cool um it, it's it's not like GameStop not corporate at all this is like owned by like a 20 year old guy that just got out of college and he owns this video game store it's really successful and I've been contributing a lot of my artwork through that they've been selling my artwork so uh they told me last time that there was there's going to be an art an art show uh, or an art concept they're going to be held uh there at the store and I kind of was thinking, like, I should enter. I don't mind, I don't care if I win. I just want to enter, you know, uh, just for the hell of it. So I decided, um, what's, you know, what's one cool thing that I could do? And I decided, you know, Legend of Zelda is like one of my favorite gaming series of all time, if not my most favorite. And I just wanted to do something cool, something that maybe, even if I don't win, that people may be interested in, in getting from me. So I was just like, yes, like, let's put, like that awesome like Obama poster from like a bunch of years back and mix it with Legend of Zelda and that's sort of what I came up with and I actually it took a long time but I had a lot of fun doing it that I didn't expect um, so I, I, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from you know obviously like screw talk talk, um, people who shared it who you know they told me like oh if you sell this I would totally buy it and obviously my friends and family told me that uh, they would totally support me and things like that. So, a lot of fun. I, I had a lot of fun making it. It's brilliant. And it's it's good work. Um, 
Yeah, it's I nice think. to know that um, Dark Hyrule Lord is using your uh, Ganondorf yeah. print as his <laughs> avatar on Twitter. That's very yeah, cool. Um, GTA Vice City Live. Yeah. <laughs> Why would you do that live? It's such a long game. Um, to be honest, it's one of those things where it's like, I never did Twitch. I've been doing Twitch, experimenting with Twitch, and I got on... I got working with Twitch by accident. The only reason I started doing gameplay footage at all via Twitch was because my computer and my the the, the video capture software that I used to use wasn't working anymore, but it was working through Twitch. So that was the only way that I could capture any kind of footage uh, for my channel for like to put on screw attack. So I figured let's just you know whatever I'm gonna do a game that I would have never normally have done recording it and I just decided you know whatever let's let's do Grand Theft Auto Vice City I have fun I've beaten a lot a lot of times I wouldn't normally have done a game if I've never beaten it because one of the things that I never liked about recording live the reason why this is the first one is because I, I always worry that if I do a game and I get stuck then that's just like an hour and a half people just looking at me running around not knowing what to do but with Vice City, I've beaten it so many times, like, I know what to do most of the time. And I have a strategy guide in case I do get stuck. So, it's a win-win. Like, I, I get to have fun. People get to watch me live. They get to, you know, tell me, like, oh, do this, do that. You know? And, you know, we all have a good time. And, you know, it's Grand Theft Auto. Who doesn't like Grand Theft Auto? It is my favorite Grand Theft Auto uh, game out of the whole series. Oh, yeah. The 80s. The I love 80s. it. Like, the neon. It's the neon. Oh, it's his name, Ray is, uh, Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. I watched Goodfellas while I was half asleep, and it was the scene when he was in in jail cooking, and all, all, all I could think about is cooking with Tommy Facetti. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he's got his own cooking show. <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> right. Um, you know. You've been doing a lot of Let's Plays recently. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the, the last one I caught of yours was the Fatal Fury playthrough. Yeah, that one was funny. That's a really, really good game. Yeah. Um, you just want me to explain it, or? Well, um, well, well yeah. the one things I like, one of the things I liked about it was like the sidestepping thing you can do. The uh, the foreground and the background. Yeah. So, um, how does Fatal Fury rack up as a game? Is it as good as Street Fighter? Is it better? The, the thing about Fatal Fury is like it came out when Street Fighter 2 came out, so a lot of people thought that it was trying to compete with the second Street Fighter, hmm. the good one, because no, you know everybody kind of when they say Street Fighter, you know they usually mean Street Fighter 2. They don't mean the first one. Yeah. Um, the the weird thing about Fatal Fury is that it, the, the the first Fatal Fury is was meant to compete with the original Street Fighter, because um, it had the same developers and it, it was actually developed by the same person. I think it was created by the same person that created the the first Street Fighter. So when you think of it that way, that then it's sort of like, oh, this is actually a pretty good game compared to the you know the original Street Fighter, which is kind of you know kind of crap. But when you compare it to Street Fighter Two, then it's like, oh, it's not that great. Because mm. it's it's kind of if you play it now, it is a little bit too archaic. It's a little too you know, a, a little bit too old school for its own good. It, it gets you know the the hit detection isn't that great. Um, the the boss is ball bustingly hard if you don't know what you're doing. So it, it it'll get on your nerves a lot. But you know by itself, I I still like going back to it just because I I love SNK fighting games in general. So I can kind of do that. Brilliant. Right. Out of all your works, all your videos and blogs, what, what is your favorite? Ooh. Uh, I'll say my favorite video so far is my retrospective on Strider. Just because it's got so many, so much good, uh, like a lot of good reaction. Uh, Craig himself liked it, so that's reason enough for me to like it. Like, hey, this you know, stuttering Craig from ScrewTag.com can say that it's an awesome video, then I'm doing something right. And it's 
I, I thought that it it came at the right time because I made that video before there was any kind of announcement as the, you know there's a new Strider game coming out. So I figure if you know I'm kind of helping people get ready for the new Strider game that's going to come out. If they don't know anything about Strider, they can come check it, you know check out that video that kind of does a retrospective on the series and kind of get caught up before they get their new HD Strider Strider game. Um, as far as the blogs, I don't really know if I have a good one. I guess the, the, my reaction to the Xbox One announcement has been the most popular, and I think that one got a lot of attention. I saw a lot of people, you know, I don't know how many, like a hundred thousand reads, and I'm just like, I, I, I in the library when I was bored. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> I didn't think it was going to get that much attention, so I, I guess people like or maybe didn't like what I said, but I guess it created a lot of buzz. So, that, that, that's what generally happens. You, you're doing nothing, you, fall, you think, I'm going to write a blog. And then, yeah. bam! Well, that's the that's what I always do. And then they always get like published on the front page. And, you know, <laughs> maybe I should do this for a living. <laughs> yeah, do it! Right, um, have you got any future projects coming up that you might want to let us in on? There's one that I'm playing around with. Um, so I'm a graphic designer, and there's one thing that I've always wanted to do is work with animation. So I'm trying to find a way to kind of bring, you know, something that I that I learned in school and something that I, you know, I like animation. Maybe not the, you know, I'm not talking like Disney Renaissance hand-drawn animation or like Pixar CGI animation, but just something along those lines. Something where I can introduce a little character here or there, um, and then make it into its own series. I'm still playing around with that, but I, I really like. I've been working with, you know, just sketching out ideas, writing out plans, scripts, um, and things like that. It's one of those things where I do it on the side, but hopefully it'll kind of all work together towards something big. And you know, I, I, I hope that one day I can get something out of it. Um, if the planets align right now. I think it would be a lot of fun. That's the one thing that, I, that I'll say about myself. I, I only do things like if I have a lot of fun. And I've been, I've been getting a, a really excited about this one. So hopefully it, it'll be a lot of fun. Hopefully it's not like one of those things where it's like, oh, it's too much work. Because at that point, like, what's the point? If, if it becomes a chore, then I don't want to do it. Very awesome. That's something to look out for. And is there any G1 out there you would like to do a collaboration with? Any collaboration project? I would say, I mean, any one of them, really. Um, I like being able to work with other people who share the same, you know, hobbies as mine. Obviously, video games, you know, I like comic books, you know, big Marvel fan. Although I am a DC, I'm, not, I'm rocking the, the, the Superman shirt right now, so I don't really nice. lean one way or the other. <laughs> but you know, I think it would be fun either way. Like, you know, I think I think as long as as long as everybody just has fun. Brilliant. Okay. You know, um, everybody talks about video games, but there's one that really caught my eye was the was your reaction video to the WWE Network. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just just wanted. What kind of stuff does that entail? What are they trying to do? Well, honestly, I, I was a fan for, like, it, it kind of goes way back to me and wrestling, because I'm originally from Mexico. I live in the United States, but I'm originally from Mexico, and obviously over there they have, like, luchadores and lucha libre and stuff like that. Mm. It's a little different over there because they kind of see them as folk heroes, that, you know, they're not, like, entertainers, superstars, or anything like that, you know, when we see, you because know, they all have masks. They're pretty much like, you know, like the neighborhood superheroes. So I've always been fascinated by that. And obviously over here it's a little different, but um, growing up in high school, middle school, I think around that time, my friends were the ones that got me interested in like American wrestling. Um, I wasn't really into it until they kind of brought me in. So for a good while I was really interested, and um, after that I kind of fell out. But then I saw this at the uh, CES this year the WWE Network, and it really caught my eye, if only because it's sort of like a Netflix service, where it, all of their, all of their pay-per-views, and I think their, their shows and stuff like that will be available, 
for really cheap. And I thought, well, I don't really like the stuff they have now. I'm not really that much of a fan as much as I was back then. But at least I could still watch all the stuff, you know, from back in the day when I was really into it. Um, and it's better than going on YouTube and finding, like, you know, the same thing running at, like, 240. Yeah. Um, and, like, freezing every other second. So, so I, I, I actually got really excited about it. So I'm, I may be picking it up. Plus, it includes WrestleMania. And that, to me, WrestleMania, whether you like the show or not, it's still sort of like an American you know, staple. Like, an institution. Yeah, it's like Super Bowl. Like, even people that don't like football still watch the Super Bowl. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I used to be a, a fan back in the day, but I just lost interest late 90s. Um, yeah, yeah. What specifically would you like to go back and watch? Except the WrestleManias. Um, I think, overall, I just love... I, I came in during the Attitude Era, hmm. when WCW and WWF were, like, going head-to-head, -head when you could switch... I remember being back then and having the option of switching between, like, you know, one channel and seeing, like, oh, holy crap, it's Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock going at it. And then if I didn't want to watch that, or if there was, like, a crappy wrestler that I didn't care about, yeah. then I could switch over... The WCW and then like holy crap it's Goldberg and Sting and it was I don't know what it was about that time but to me it was just like there was always like there was always options to watch and nowadays you don't really have that um, so I love all the characters I like over the top I'll even go back and say like I want to see like the you know, Hulk Hogan Macho Man matches yeah. like really over the top really campy stuff just to see how ridiculous it was because I love doing, like, Macho Man impressions with me and my friends. It's awesome. <laughs> Especially after a couple of beers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that was that was very different. Okay, yeah. we've reached the uh, the middle segment, awesome. which is the gaming confessionals. Mr. Johnny Crimson 2K, is there anything gaming-related you are not proud of that you would like to get off your chest with us today? You know, it's not that I'm not proud of it, but that other people, I think, will cringe when they see it. Um, just because, especially if you've seen the top, like, ScrewTax Top 10, I'll be the first one to say, I actually like this game. Oh. Uh, Final Fight Streetwise. <laughs> Final Fight Streetwise. And I'll tell you why, good sir. Because I have been in a big Final Fight for, like, the longest. And this game came out, what, 2005, 2000, I don't know when. And the last time that we had anything from Final Fight, when that game came out, was 99. And that was, like, the crappy Sega Saturn uh, fighting game that nobody got. So, to me, when I got when I got this game, it was like, oh my god, Capcom, Capcom still knows that this thing exists. So, to me, it was just, like, a blessing that they even released anything Final Fight related. And to be honest, I actually had a lot of fun playing it. If only because of nostalgia's sake, maybe that's why. I don't know. I don't remember the, the you know, the same thing that everybody complains about about the graphics being crap or that the gameplay being dull. Maybe it's just I don't know, maybe it's just like my inner fanboy that kind of blocked those things out. But I remember having a good time playing it. And I I actually beat it like two or three times. I actually helped my friend beat it. He was stuck. But um yeah, I, I, I don't think uh, people would like it when, <laughs> like, every time I say, like, oh, Final Fight Streetwise wasn't that bad, and then, you know, I get, like, flames for that for, like, God. the next <laughs> half hour. I do have something on Final Fight. Um, I did a live stream with a friend of mine last August, and I've heard about the game. Uh, we played Final Fight 3, and I've got to confess... That, that was the first time I ever played Final Fight. I knew about the games, but I thought, let's play this on a live stream, let's see what happens. And that was the first time the I ever played Final, Final Fight. Fight. Final Fight 3? Yeah, well, any Final well, Fight a, for that matter. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good one to start on. That was a good one. I like to throw in one of my confessions every now and again. Okay, right. We're going to move on to some video game questions. I think that's what everybody wants to see. <laughs> I can find it. Here we go. Johnny Crimson. Yes. What is your favorite system of all time? 
I, I'm going to say the Super Nintendo. Just because that one overall, before the PlayStation got there, that one, um, I think, was the overall the most complete. Um, you know, it had, I think the only thing it didn't have compared to the Genesis was, like, sports games. Mm. But to me, it, was, it didn't matter all that much, just because I wasn't really into sports games um, back then. I think the only one that I played on the Super Nintendo was NBA Jam. But as far as other classics and things like that, I thought it was the most complete system. Like, you had Mario, Metroid, Zelda. And it had... That, this was back when Nintendo still had good third-party, you know, games. Like, Final Fantasy. And, like, Contra, Gradius, all that stuff. So, I mean, there, there's other... Like, I could say a bunch of other systems. But I think, to me, I think that's... I'm the most nostalgic when it comes to the Super Nintendo. So, I think that one is... Currently, my favorite. I mean, I flip flop. Next week, I could say the second trick pass. So. <laughs> okay. What are you playing at the minute, and how are you liking it? Well, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> that one. Uh, besides that one, though, uh, I've been I've been catching up with the Marvel vs. Capcom series, and. And that one, if, if only just because I'm preparing to record footage for that. Nice. And I don't want to be suckish on it. I'm currently stuck on Marvel vs. Capcom versus Onslaught because he's a pain Ooh. in the butt. He's really cheap. Um, but I usually try to play that I want to record, like months in advance so that I can practice. And then when I start recording, I look like I don't suck. Um, <laughs> So I'm playing that, and I'm also playing Eco, which is a game for the PlayStation 2, um, which is really awesome. I don't think, I think it, it's sort of like the, the precursor to Shadow of the Colossus, um, but I think it got skipped over by a lot of people. I think it was a launch title for the PlayStation 2, um, and that one's also a game that I'm planning on, on covering on my channel at some point, but again, it's kind of like a longer game, um, so I just want to be sure that I know what I'm doing before I start recording so you don't see me like 30 minutes of backtracking and me being lost. Cool. Right. Did you bring along your treasured gaming possession for us this evening? You know what? I Not a gaming possession, but I do have something with me that's pretty awesome. And I'm actually very proud of it. Bring it on. You know what? It's actually right next to me. This is uh, Mjolnir. Aha! This is... Uh, Thor's hammer, and it, it's come with like the handle and everything, and I'm very proud of it because I actually made this myself. I made it for Halloween. It's made out of uh, PCP pipe. I think this is uh, foam, paint, and um, leather. So it took me so long to make, but um, it's pretty sturdy. I was actually not allowed to bring it with me to a um, Halloween um, sort of like party that they have at uh, one of the universities here with one of my friends because they, the, the security people, thought that it was a real weapon. <laughs> but... <laughs> Take him down! <laughs> He's got a weapon! Yeah, I know. It's like, oh my god, it's me on there. Um, <laughs> so, I, I'm very proud of it, and I was just like, you know what, whatever, screw it. So I took a picture of myself before I went out there, so I have proof that I made it uh, on my Facebook profile picture. I'm going to have to look that up and post it on this uh, interview. Yeah. Right, <laughs> we have come to the final section, the G1 question. I'm actually very interested about this. Yeah. <laughs> G1 Prowler 64 asks, what game is on your list that you still haven't collected or played? And uh, why? Um, there's one game for the, if, well I have a couple of games for the Saturn that I would really love to collect. And it's so hard to collect for that game for that system because a lot of the good games go for really ridiculous prices on eBay. Um, there's at least two that I want to collect for the Sega Saturn. The first one is Mega Man 8 um, because Mega Man 8 on the Saturn it's available on the PlayStation and that's usually the one that most people have that version. Yeah. But on the Saturn version, it has a completely different sound track or different soundtrack and I actually prefer it and it also has two optional boss battles that you can't find on the PlayStation version 
which a lot of people are like, is that really worth paying like fifty dollars extra? And I'm just like, I'm a Mega Man fan. I want to have that. You know, if it's the complete version, I want to have. You know, if that's the version that Capcom wanted to release, then I want to have it. Even though I think right now it's going for like a hundred dollars with just the disc, which is ridiculous. But it's <laughs> for, yeah. for real gamers. That you know, damn it, you'll do it. Yes. Um, the other one is uh, Panzer Dragoon Saga. That's sort of like my dream uh, game that I can get. Um, obviously, Panzer Dragoon Saga is like the, the RPG for the Panzer Dragoon series, and uh, for this. And every time you go on eBay, you can never find a complete, you know, in box, uh, you know, the complete game. You always, I always, or every time I've gone on there, I always find like, all right, disc one for fifty dollars. Disc two for a hundred, this three for like something ridiculous. So, oh um, <laughs> that's gonna take a while to get. But I would really love to play that game. Okay, next question is from G1 A Zero to Hero, and he wants to know. Turn ons. Goombas. What turns you on? <laughs> Goombas. No. Um... <laughs> <laughs> the sound when you squish them. Uh, you know what? This is sort of like private, but I think it has to do with 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 the gaming. Um, not, I I don't know if it counts as a turn on, but it's one of the, the qualities that I like about a girl. Um, and I'm being dead serious. Like I'm not I'm not kidding. With you. Like I like a girl that just because it's so rare. Maybe I'm not hanging out with this, with the right group of people, but I like a girl like when I meet them and they maybe they don't games, because I've had it happen before with a couple of girls that I've met, uh, they're hanging out with, you know, my group of friends, you know, we play games all the time, like Halo, and we used to play, like, Guitar Hero and stuff like that, so they'll, they'll just be, like, there on the side, like, oh, I'll, I'll watch you guys. I really like it when girls can just be like, alright, screw that, I'm not just gonna sit on the side and just let you guys have all the fun, like, let me, let me, I wanna learn how to play too, and yeah, they'll get their ass kicked and stuff like that, but the fact that they try something about that and have some fun just, doing it yes <laughs> yeah like I, I just i i don't know why like I, I find that really attractive that they can get into something that you know that i like that's like my hobby so i don't know i don't know why like they could be like it's not even you know they can be smoking hot and like you know they don't play video games like, I was like oh, all right, all right. They're, they're pretty to look at but if it's like an okay looking girl but and then she picks you know she picks up the the Xbox controller, I'm just like, oh my god, that girl's so hot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's brilliant. That is the end of this interview. Thank you very much, Mr. Johnny Crimson 2000, for joining me this oh. evening. Do you have any parting words? Um, I hope that everybody enjoyed this interview. This is actually, I think, my first time on camera, so we're here. Lovely. Okay, I've yeah. been Master Wayne for G1 interviews on G1 features. Good night and take care of yourselves. Ciao guys.